Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I have Carolyn Lowe on the line, and she's co-founder and CEO over at ROI Swift. Carolyn, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. All right, Carolyn, so I'm excited about today's topic. So we're going to talk about optimizing your sales on Amazon. A lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executives out there listening, um, different size companies from large to small, and, and Amazon, we all know it's a big topic. So we're going to get into that. But before we do, um, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing over at ROI Swift. Tell us a little bit more about your company, please. Sure. So I founded the agency in 2015 really with the mission of helping what I call emerging brands. So, you know, we have a saying that if Nike wanted to work with us, we would say no. We're really passionate about the, you know, two to $50 million brands. Those folks that are the challenger brands, emerging brands. You know, um, I spent six years at Dell and made a lot of money for Michael Dell, but at the end of the day, it feels really good to make money for folks that are, you know, maybe getting their Series A round and, um, you know, they don't have lots of money to burn. So, Start of the agency really focused on three core companies, core competencies, Amazon, paid social ads, which is Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, TikTok. We'll see how long that lasts for. And uh, and paid search and social and dis- uh, and display. So we're a Google agency partner. We're a Facebook agency partner. We're one of just a few hundred Amazon agency partners. Um, and uh, that's, our, that's our story, a little bit about us. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. And uh, so you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned size of company. So you, you you work well. I believe you said you play well in that two to fifty million range in terms of company size. If I'm off, correct me. But um, are there at the end of this, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to leave a website or social or wherever you want people to follow up with that fall kind of in with those parameters. But other than size of company, if I um, what what are, are is there specific niches or is, is there one type of company you like working with better than others? Like what's typically a good fit for ROI? Swift? Oh, good question. Thanks for asking, Adam. It is really the folks that are brands. We don't work with a lot of resellers. You know, we really are working with emerging brands. Um, one of our brands that, you know, I started with right when I started the agency, we grew them. They got acquired by Reckett Benkheiser, who owns uh, Lysol, Mucinex, Airwick, Direct, you name it. Um, and then there's another brand, a, a boot brand we started with um, right when we started the agency, 2015, 2016, grew them from zero to 12 million in 18 months just on Facebook ads. So really those direct-to-consumer brands, um, uh, we really love Shopify stores. Uh, they integrate great with all of our with all of our. So we've worked in everything from natural food, supplements, pets. We really do well with apparel, fashion, accessories, jewelry, uh, you name it. But really anybody who's got a direct-to-consumer site, we don't do a lot of B2B. We're largely uh, B2C are the companies that we help grow. We have a mission to help a 1,000 companies by 2024, and we're up to 126. So I've got, you know, just over 875 to go before retirement. Man, that's awesome. I love this. What, what a great story, and I love someone with the goal. This is amazing. Uh, and I think this is a good transition, too. So, Carolyn, let's get into today's topic a little further. We, uh, so, optimizing sales on Amazon. Uh, where do you want to start with this one? I know this is a big topic, and we can only cover so much in a you know, 15-minute podcast episode or 20 minutes, whatever it is. Um, but uh, where do you want to start with this one? 
You know, I, I'm going to simplify it. You know, I think people, we, we, we've seen this too. I mean, I know we're going to talk about Amazon, but we've seen this with our Facebook clients is that when they come to us, people have been doing 50 different types of campaigns. And believe it or not, simplifying it makes it that much more effective and profitable. Same thing with Amazon. At the end of the day, it comes down to, first of all, um, do you have a good product? So there's only so long that you can put lipstick on a pig. If you have a three and a half star out of five star product, go back and fix your product. So that's the first thing we do before we, we work with someone is we make sure they have four and five star products because you're, you're not going to be around for long if you're, you know, three and a half star product. Someone else is going to come along and do it better. So that's the first thing to do is, okay, to make money on Amazon, you got to have good products, right? It sounds simple, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't believe how many people that we have said, this is a lousy product. It's a million dollar brand that you, it's a million dollar SKU. Go fix your product or else it's going to be a $700 SKU next year, right? People are going to start to say, Hey, there's a big market and this product isn't that good. Um, so that's the first thing. And then it just comes down to two things, right? Sessions and conversion. Just like in your website, it's about traffic and conversion, right? That's those are the two numbers that matter. So we really focus on a um, couple of major things to drive that, right? So to drive traffic, one is how good is your organic listing? What does the main image look like? Is your title relevant? So there's all these things we do, just like on you would do Google to show up organically, same thing with Amazon, all these things you can do to show up organically. And then the second half of it is just like Google, Amazon has advertising. So Amazon has now surpassed Microsoft, uh, Microsoft ads in terms of they're the fourth largest uh, revenue from advertising. So um, that's where a lot of Amazon's, you know, profit is coming from. And so that's the other piece, right? So you can get the the folks to convert higher. So you can get more sessions by advertising and you can get better conversion by be- having a better listing. So those are the things that we focus on. We have some core metrics, you know, if someone's not converting at 15% on Amazon, We'll go figure out, hey, do you have a bad listing or are you sending bad traffic from bad advertising? And it really comes down to those two factors. I, I hate to oversimplify it, but that's really what it comes down to. Now, there's a ton that goes into that organic optimization and advertising mm-hmm. optimization. But at the end of the day, if you want to grow your product sales, you either got to get more traffic or get more of those people that come to your page to convert. So I know this is going to change from, um, from, you know, industry to industry, size of company, founder, you know, all these things. I mean, it happens over and over again. Um, and I know it's going to be different, but where do you find, and the reason I ask this question, by the way, is because some people listening to this, they're like, ah, I get it. I've been told this, uh, but it doesn't necessarily apply to us. So I like to, I like to add some context to this. What do you find are some of those common mistakes that you've seen like over and over and over again, um, from people before they come to your agency where you're like, ah, I I kind of figured this was going to be this and now we can help them. Um, Cause I know there's some people listening right now that fall into that category that are like, Oh, we've heard this. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I'll give you an example. We work with a uh, natural cleaning brand and when we started working with them, they were doing 30,000 a month and they were doing it unprofitably. So yeah, as you, as you can imagine, right. Uh, Shipping costs aren't going down, right? Think about what it mm-hmm. used to cost you to send a, send something via USPS. You mm-hmm. could send a overnight priority mail for a few dollars. Now it's $10, right, for a, a tiny little box. So shipping costs are not coming down. So one of the things Amazon is doing is trying to reduce their shipping costs, right? They're doing way more fulfillment centers here in Austin. They've got offices. They've got uh, fulfillment centers just outside of Austin. And so they're really trying to get closer to the customer so they can reduce those shipping costs. So the products that are really hard to make money on are, you know, these cleaning products, right? You think about your your counter spray, your bathroom spray, that stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's heavy and it's cheap. So those are bad products to sell on Amazon, <laughs> right? So and competitive. We always have, <laughs> exactly. So we always try and work with brands strategically on maximizing their their profitability. You know, when I was at Dell, I, I, I had a massive P&L that I ran for the consumer marketing division. And it's amazing to me that how many folks just get on Amazon but don't know those profitability numbers. So we always mm. say if it's less than $15, 
um, you know, you're going to end up paying 15% in fees to Amazon usually. Different categories are different. You pay 17 mm-hmm. for clothing, but on average 15. And then, um, and then you have to pay them your outbound shipping, or you can do it yourself, but, you know, then you don't get Prime and your costs aren't as good as Amazon. So at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're giving Amazon 60% if you're selling a $10 product. So mm. that's not really profitable. So we love those, um, you know, we had a client that sold um, postpartum things for women. So wraps for your stomach and uh, things like that. And they were $40 and they weighed less than a pound. So that is a perfect product, right? Mm. So we love the uh, over $25 price point and uh, lightweight, you know, a pound or less. Those are ones that are really good to make money on Amazon. And if you're in that sort of, you know, lower, lower prices, We'll say, okay, do two packs or do bigger sizes. And so really at speed, that's one big mistake people make is just not knowing their numbers, not understanding all the fees and not understanding, okay, here's my product price, here's my cogs, here's what I'm paying Amazon, here's what I'm going to have to pay for advertising. And hopefully that's a net number when you when you subtract all the other numbers. Wow, I feel like you just now saved some people that are listening to this some time, like a lot of time right there. Because I feel like normally, especially if you think Amazon is going to be a big part of your, you know, how you sell or you want to sell on Amazon, normally, you know, you think of the product first, you start creating it, you do this, you do that, you fall in love with it, like your cleaning company, for example, an example, you just have this idea, and then you get to the, it's all ready to go, and then you look at the numbers, and you're going to Amazon, you're like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, it's heavy and it's cheap. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I should have thought of that one first. Oh, man, that's a, that's a great example. Yeah, and then the other way, of course, is advertising. That's another way to uh, not be very profitable. A lot of times people will set up campaigns, but they won't know to, uh, you know, you. it's just like Google. You've got to put negatives in there. Amazon will match to some crazy things sometimes. So you really, um, you, you really need to know the ins and outs of Amazon advertising to be successful. That's awesome. So, Carolyn, I could talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time for this episode. Uh, So that being said, if somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more about ROI Swift and work with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and to connect? Sure. Uh, So we are the cobbler with no shoes. We probably have one of the lousiest websites because we spend all our time on our clients. Um, but you can go to www.roiswift.com and uh, fill out a contact form there, or you could just uh, send an email to hello at roiswift.com. Fantastic. Well, Carolyn, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background, all the great stuff you're doing over at ROI Swift to help your clients and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Carolyn, thanks again for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Adam.